Peace, family. Peace. Once again, this is Mario L. Bay. Visit my website, www.publishedinfo.net, or I can be contacted at publishedinfo at gmail.com. All right. Now, with that being said, um, this is a continuation of my video. You want to tell me something about 10,000 years ago? Um, I'll start off like this. Um, I made that video in regards to a lot of situations that's going on out here in the community. So, you know, it wasn't in a um, negative aspect of me delivering information. It was just a hardcore good truth on how I feel about certain situations that goes on in the community of so-called black people. Now, um, so-called black people, we go through so many issues and the, 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 the issues we go through is mainly because we don't know who we are. Um, ancestral lineage, consanguinity, bloodline, pedigree, we have no idea precisely who we are as a people. Uh, so many division ships between our people and it's, it's out of control now. And my thing is to help wake up as many as I can wake up because that is my duty to uplift fallen humanity in regards to the message that was sent to us by Nova Drew Ali. Now, most people look at the Moorish information as some type of occultish, uh, mystic, spooky, masonry type of deal. And when it's dealing with straight science, so we're not the religious group or the religious organization, or we're not the Moors. And, you know, because people, you know, they go into that and they say it all the time. They say the Moors, you know, like it's a certain, you know, set of people. What it is, is the ideology of the Moors, so to speak is that we're here to uplift, uplift fallen humanity and, um, you know, going our course in life, helping the children, helping um, the elderly, best way we know how to, whether it be helping them uh, uplift spiritually, mentally, financially, wherever we see fit, that's where, you know, we come in and we try to speak and bring the information of nationality to the key because without nationality, you have nothing. The this is why the things go go on in especially in North America in regards to people being addressed as Indians here on this uh continent of North America, black people, um, Puerto Ricans, um, African Americans Man, I can name them all day, man. It's like everything but who we really are as a whole. Now, when you're dealing with nationality, you have to be able to trace your nation to a landmass. Again, we're Americans or we're Moroccans or we're Moors. Now, I'm speaking to the people that are indigenous to the Americas, okay? Uh, of course, we all share a familiar bloodline of African ancestry and descent, but here we are Moors. And in that video, I broke down how um, the science of epithesis and umlaut was used to actually corrupt the word Morocco into what it is now, America. Um, with that being said, people, do your homework. We've tried everything else. We've tried the Black Power Movement. We've tried the um, Kemetic. We've tried, you know, uh, different organizations, uh, Black Power, uh, Black Panther, excuse me. Uh, we tried these things, but at the end of the day, we need to know exactly who we are and tie that back to a landmass so we can exercise our rights as indigenous people in the Americas. Now, myself, I normally uh, deal with civics more than I deal with anything. Now, I can explain why. 
not that I'm not versed in other subject matters matters within the Moorish movement, but civics hit me hard because years ago a situation came up where I had to, I had to fight it myself, and before I was conscious of civics and law, I hired an attorney. And that attorney was a so-called Jew, European male. And I asked him, um, you know, what type of time could I get for this situation that I was caught up in? And he basically typed on his computer, didn't look me in my eye like a man, and said, well, whatever, whatever they want to give you, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, whatever. I knew right then that I could not put my life in the hands of a European male, a foreigner, to the Americas. I could not do it. So I fought it. Now, prior to me, uh, before I actually fired him, I was studying. I was studying contract law. I was getting a real good concept of nationality. I studied a lot of the European sovereigns, even though they're not sovereign to the Americas, but I, I, I cross reference information. Now, when you truly want to learn something, that's what's done. You, you get information here, you get information there, and you compare it and see what makes sense or what is factual versus what may not be factual, okay? Um, I did that for quite a while. Um, I looked into uh, the Social Security um, Act, um, the Buck Act, Privacy Act, um, constitutional issues. And I thought about it to myself. I said, you know, self, these things has to have a, it have to have some type of relevance to the people because it exists to a certain degree. Okay? It, it exists to a certain degree. So, excuse me. So, I learned these things, I studied these things, and it came time where I had to actually apply these things. Now, I've never said one time that it was easy. I mean, these days, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier because I understand the strategy is straight chess, it's straight mental. 99.9% .9 of the things they do to our people and they being the foreign government, you know, like the city of, the state of, it's 99.9% .9 bluff. Okay, it's 99.9% .9 bluff. Now, they will act on certain things, especially if they see you don't know how to act or proceed, okay? Now, I hear so many brothers, I hear so many brothers online, man, that law, that law stuff don't work. You can't do that. You can't do this. They ain't going to let you do that. See, with that mind frame alone, is setting you back. You just cast a spell on yourself. You basically just said that I can't do it. So if you place a spell on yourself, especially in a negative manner, saying that doesn't work or I can't do it, of course, you'll go straight to the table and lose every time. Now, again, I'm versed in history. I'm versed in uh, civics. I'm versed in various amounts of sciences that deals with uh, Moorish literature and Moorish heritage, history, etc. But civics is like, that's where I'm at. Like, so when you see my videos, that's mainly what I'll be speaking about. And you will hear me speak about Noble Drew Ali. You will hear me speak about um, cosmology here and there, or, you know, different historical situations that happen between the moors such as the renaissance but civics that's what i that's what i really really i really enjoy civics so people know that 
these instruments such as the driver's license, marriage license, the birth certificate, they all exist for a reason, and the reason is debt on you and someone to claim debt on you. So if you don't understand this, now is the time for you to understand that that's what it's all about. So slavery, quote unquote, these days is not necessarily physical bondage, captivity. Um, I mean, it is, but it's not. It's mainly paper now. You know, you're you're enslaved by way of paper. Now, that's why people have no idea about contract law. They have no idea what it means. What is it? I don't even think they give a damn. But I'm here to spread the information and knowledge and let people know that you should give a damn. <laughs> because in order to untie yourselves out of certain situations, especially in regards to paper or documents, you should know the fundamentals of contract law and jurisprudence, the science that treats of uh, positive law, or well, the philosophy and the science that treats of positive law. So you have two versions of law. You have positive and you have negative. So this information is for the people that says, well, they ain't going to let you do this, and they're not going to let you do that. Well, what they're doing is they're practicing negative law. They're under a uh, democracy. But what more is enforced is the republic, which is aligned with Article 4, Section 4 of the American Constitution. So know the difference between a republic and a democracy. Most black people, now I put emphasis on black people, most black people scream for a democracy. But I've never seen one black person actually define what a democracy really is. Not one time. Now, I remember years ago, I had the same ideology that a democracy was for our people and a republic was for Europeans because I was just as twisted as you guys. Now I know that a republic means that the power and the will and the rights of the people is for you <laughs> and you only. Democracy is the total opposite. I would uh, suggest look up, look these things up in any law dictionary and compare it. Just compare it. And that's what true scholars do. True scholars, they get information, they continue and look for information, they compare information, they reference information, and they see where the facts lie. They see where the BS lie, and they can see where things have been left out. So that would be my suggestion to get a law dictionary and understand those things. Um, oh, yeah, again, um, a lot of the videos I post in regards to, um, you know, me traveling with Moorish plates. Yes, I travel with Moorish plates, and I mean, I've earned that right to, because I fought hard to do that, and I wouldn't suggest anyone to just go out and, you know, do what I did, because, I mean, it's just not the thing to just do. You have to really have a good understanding, overstanding of what's being said, what's being done. Um, understanding territorial jurisdiction, understanding their obligations, and you have to have, you know, a lot of heart to proceed with the information. So, don't give up your state place just yet. Don't give up your driver's license just yet. Understand these things. Understand what a contract is. Understand what it is not. Understand how you can be in a contract, um, such as an adhesion contract, meaning that you're being bind. You're bind with some type of corporation, some type of person saying that, hey, you owe us this, and we're not letting you go into you pay. 
okay? Understand how to get out of certain contracts. You don't have to pay money to get out of a contract. That's for people that's incompetent. It's, it's certain principles and rules that govern the law of contracts to have a good understanding of how to be released from a contract. And if you're not released, how to go after the corporation or the person that's trying to continue and obligate you. You got the Federal Trade Commission. As a matter of fact, look up um, um, Deceptive Practices Act uh, under the Federal Trade Commission. I believe it's section four or five. But when a corporation comes at you and they claim that you're obligated and you put in writing letting them know to cease and desist further communication with me, normally it just depends on how you deliver your message. Normally they'll stop, but sometimes you have aggressive uh, collecting agencies or, you know, just have some people out here that just don't believe in stopping. Now, once you let them know, like, look here, cease and desist further communication with me um, ASAP. Well, not ASAP. You don't want to say that. Um, immediately. If not, uh, this is what I'll do. I'll report you to the Federal Trade Commission under Deceptive Practicing Acts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That'll get their attention. Okay. That that will get their attention because that whole entire act is designed to incriminate the people that try to uh, obligate you to something that you may not be obligated to. So I just gave you guys a freebie. I just gave you a freebie. Now it's up to you to actually have the balls, the heart. To actually proceed with it. But it's more. It's more. It's a discipline thing. It's a mind thing. Um, the, the whole nine. Um, so that's for. The people that want to talk about. What happened 10,000 years ago. So. That's a measure that some people can take. Because in my opinion. The biggest problem. We have in North America. In my opinion is pseudo religion is one because it's a mind control thing that's like the number one thing in my opinion pseudo religion i would say the next thing our biggest problem is not knowing who we are as a people and being able to come to the conclusion everybody in north america to say this is who we are besides saying black which represents death under political science. Now, let me explain this. Now, if we say that we are black and we're dealing with like, <clears throat> excuse me, the origin of the universe, um, supreme balancement, cosmogony, cosmology, yes, I agree, we are black. So you heard that from me. I agree. If you're dealing with it in those terms, we are black. Now, when you're dealing on a political note, no, <laughs> that is the worst thing you want to say. I'm black, I'm proud, and you're dealing with politics? No. It gets you nowhere. Now, a true scholar would actually look into this and put his emotions in his back pocket and keep moving. That's what a true scholar would do. A whiny person, um, a man that acts as if he's a man, well, I'll say a male that acts as if he's a manly man, maybe he won't do it. But that's what true scholars do. They research, they find out, they compare information and see, okay, what is right, what seems right. And how can this work? Okay. Now, another thing. 
for the people that want to talk about the things that happened 10,000 years ago. Again, like I said, that's fine. That's cool. But it's not solving any of the issues that we're having in North America in regards to being in prison. Anytime and every time you get pulled over, you have to pay parking fees. When you go downtown, you have to pay parking fees. You have to pay court fees, maybe probation, man, like fines from everywhere, right? So the information from 10,000 years ago, you know, talking about how we were kings and queens and shit, that's cool. It's cool, you know. But look into this. You got um, on the note that we were kings and queens and shit. Look into, uh, matter of fact, just Google we were kings or we were kings and queens and shit. Google that. What you will find is you will find a form of Europeans that's actually mocking you guys, the guys that say that. They have like an inside joke. It's like a big form of Europeans that mock and joke and make fun at black people that say we were kings and queens. So you got you have uh, European guys that's making all these Negro gestures and yeah, we were kings and queens and shit. They have pictures of Egyptian artifacts in the background. They making they making straight up man, they they making fun of you guys. They can they can even see the foolishness in what's being said by taking on the role of being a king and a queen. And you're at the lowest level in society on the planet Earth, mentally. They see it. Again, look it up. We were kings and queens and shit. So in order to be a king, you have to live like a king. You have to be a king. Like your actions show that you're a king. If you're a queen, your actions show that you're a queen. It's not twerking in public. It's not walking around using profanity for you black ladies. Every time you look up, got your titties hanging out. Got three foot of weave hanging out of your skull. Three inches of makeup on your face. You understand? That's, I mean, I mean, if, if if you take it as an attack, so be it. I'm just being truthful. Okay, so there's no way in the hell as a majority, collectively, that we're kings and queens, period. Now, what was, okay, 10,000, 20, 30,000 years ago, okay, maybe we were kings and queens and shit. And we sat on gold thrones and, you know, Whatever, whatever. But my whole point is um, just speaking about that and not speaking on information that can actually help the people in regards to what's going on now is, is not enough. That's my point. It's not my point. Um, again, people, I mean, it has to cut... It, it, the boop, the BS has to stop. It has to stop. It has to stop. So whether you're in agreement with me or not, it really doesn't matter. The point is this. We have a nationality. We have a landmass. We have a flag. We have a seal. And those things are needed when you're dealing with nationality, you need to be understood what those things mean. Okay? So actually, I'm directly speaking to um, people that's new to this information. That's normally who I make my videos for. I'm showing them that certain things can be done. Okay, certain things can be done. And certain things will be done by certain people. 
Now, in order to get to the next level of anything, you have to sacrifice. I sacrifice. I sacrifice for my family, myself, and for the people to a high degree. And I mean, it's, it's always been in me. You know, it, it's always been in me to do do that. Um, so I'm not afraid of um, the sacrifice. I'm not afraid of what could happen, the consequence, any of those things. Now, what I see in a lot of the brothers out here that they are afraid. And I understand that. I really do. I, I, I really understand the fear because it can be a scary thing being incarcerated. Being away from your family, your loved ones, your friends, being told what to do, um, when to do it, when not to do it, um, being fed garbage, um, just treating you like a sort of like a hamster or something, you know, like a hamster in a cage. So that's understandable, but our minds have to be right because. That's very possible incarceration amongst our people. It's happening anyway. That's my point. It's happening anyway. So why not actually fight for it? I see brothers like, like, I'm from where they call the Memphis Territory or Memphis. All right. I've seen it all here. I mean, I know brothers that straight up murderers like straight up murderers and i've you know talked to these guys and for some reason they are afraid to <laughs> enforce this information but these guys are murderers robbers drug dealers pimps and they will not so when I speak to people, when I go back to my old neighborhood where I grew up and try to talk to the guys about this information and how they can fight, they listen. But I, I, I rarely see action. I saw action from one brother out of the tens and about 20 some odd brothers I've spoken to about this information. One brother changed his life around and started the fight. Now, again, we're dealing with murderers, drug dealers, pimps, hustlers of all sorts are afraid to enforce this information. But this is what they do to survive on a daily basis. And that's kind of puzzling to me. That's 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 puzzling to me. Like, what type of mental structure do these people have to willingly sell drugs, to willingly murder, especially your own brother, and face the time behind that, and not just take the time out to study yourself, study history compare it and if something was to happen you'll have enough understanding to fight it yourself instead of being inside of a corporate jurisdiction where you have no leeway or you have to pay all sorts of finance or give up your home to a fucking European I would never do it I would never fucking do it never they would have me, I have been in the hole because I didn't want to take the shots that they give in the jails, you know, in my fights. So they would throw me in the hole with the shit throwers. Like, these guys were literally throwing shit. I mean, not at me, but, you know, maybe like the cell in front of me, I can see them painting their room with their own shit. Like, this is an ins insane institution. And I made it my business, even in the hole, to speak with these brothers about nationality. 
And like I always say, it's something about jail that'll make a person change their life. Man, every morning, these bros will call my cell number. They'll holler my cell number out, wake me up, and we'll get to, you know, studying. I'll tell them things about the Constitution, the steps about how they should fight, how they should not fight. And they was getting that lesson. But when you're outside of the prison, no one wants to listen. Okay, I understand that. There's a lot of sisters out here that's giving up their tail easy. It's a lot of egos, you know, people making it rain. Okay, they still operating on that lower chakra. I get that. I get that. So that, I guess that's what's helping them not to proceed with what I'm speaking about. But it will be in your <laughs> it will be in your best duty to know who you are. You know, because most people will be like, "Well, man, I can just get a lawyer." Okay, we'll get a lawyer then. And you'll see what they'll do. After you pay them all of this finance, all of this finance, you're in a foreign jurisdiction. They're not obligated to you. The first obligation is to the court. They're under the Barrister Association of England. Him and the magistrate, etc. And why are you putting yourself, black man, in this foreign jurisdiction, but you're a strong African. You're a strong black man. But you're giving yourself to the European. You ain't supposed to know this information. Hey, I'm just giving it to you raw. I'm just giving it to you raw. Um, I'm coming in the spirit of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And that's the only way I know to come along with a little tough love on the side. But uh, we'll tune back in next time and we'll speak about some more things in regards to who we are, how we should behave, and all that other good stuff. Visit my website, www publishedinfo.net or I can be contacted at publishedinfo at gmail.com Peace family.